Well, that was fun. Hey guys, welcome to the show today. We are gonna be checking out this 16 gauge AEG nailer. Now this guy works off batteries. I'm gonna be unboxing it and testing it out. We've got several test pieces of wood, all sorts of stuff. Cause we have started the project. We've already removed the trim off around our window and that window up there. The first question you ask is why 16 gauge? Well, everyone today tends to be using 18 gauge with a little bit of wood glue. However, this house over 20 years old, they previously, 20 years ago, used 16 gauge nails. 16 gauge nails. I'll show you the finish very soon. But 16 gauge nails survived 20 years. It was perfectly flush with the trim. It didn't move and it survived. So I don't want to risk 18 gauge nails, especially up there because I don't always, every single day, have a scissor lift by my side. I only have a scissor lift here because I got rid of all the tiles so I can put it on concrete. If I had tiles here, I would have to, it would take a lot of work. So I don't want to have to do this job ever again. So I'm going to be using 16 gauge again. Now the finish, 20 years ago, just before we get to this unboxing, let me see if you can spot the nails. So that is a mark right there. That is right there. So that's the kind of finish you're looking for. Let's see, there's, there's one, a nail sticking slightly out. You can see it. And uh, there is another one. Actually right here, they've covered this one up well. That's nice, that's a good finish. This one's a bad finish. This one's also, you can see it. So if I can get anywhere of the quality as a noob with this nail gun, anywhere of this quality, I'll be happy. So let me just unbox it, show you what's inside. Inside. Just open it up here. It's always nice getting new tools. You feel like, oh yeah, oh yeah, good stuff. Now, oh, this is cool. You get an actual bag. So you can actually store this nail gun. I read in one of the reviews is that they didn't actually provide a bag for this nail gun. So it actually comes with a bag now. 2022, 23 edition. This is the beast of the nail gun. It's gigantic. It's huge. Let me just unwrap it. It's always fun opening up new tools. Smells, smells nice and clean and gorgeous. Boom. Very heavy. I've got to say, it doesn't even have a battery on it, but it is. I think it's three and a half kg. That's what level it is. Very heavy. So it's going to be a bit of a workout. I recommend doing that. Being ambidextrous, switch both hands to get a good workout on both arms. Oh, yeah. My work here is done. So there's a little clip up here in case you get a jam. You can unhook it like that. And it does have a bump stop. So when you are playing with the wood, it doesn't leave a mark. That can be taken off if you're going through some thick material. I'm going to keep it on and see how it goes. For the test, I've got several pieces of wood. So I've got the initial, the original 20 year old framing wood that are used in the household. So we'll probably see that underneath here, the studs. I'm going to deep into that. I've also got some pine that they sell now in, in Bunnings. See if there is any difference. Has it changed? I've got two pairs of trims. So I've got the original trim that I've got. These are 11 millimeters deep. And I've also got 80 millimeters thick trim. So we'll try them all out and show you the different depths. So let's take it outside and do some practice shots. All right, so to get the show on the road, I've got some nails. These are galvanized nails. You can get stainless steel if you're maybe going for exterior finish. Galvanized should be good enough for indoors. There's uh, two different types of galvanized. There's electro galvanized and hot dip galvanized. I'm not sure what kind these are, but for me, it's indoors, so I'm not too concerned about it. I'm gonna be using the 50 millimeter. So to load the gun, pull this down. You get the heads of the nails and you slot in to the crevice here. Then on the other side, there's that button you press and it locks it in. And if you look carefully, the tip is chiseled like this, like this. So it's gonna be going forwards. So that means the chisel split can even make the gun shoot left or right. So if you wanna hold, if you hold it straight, if the nail does hit another nail or anything like that. It can split, go to the left or right. So maximum setting here. Oh, look at that finish. Let's just compare. It's nice, it's fully inside the wood and that'll be easy to fill up afterwards. I'm gonna reduce the depth. It's still bombed on through the wood. I'll reduce it a little bit more. It's getting more flush now. So this is actually the minimum depth I've got here. So I'm going to have to reduce the air compression ratio. I'm going to put it on the medium. And that is getting more flush. Look at that. 
You can see a little bit of nail. I'll just reduce the air compression just a little bit more. That's not good. So pump up the air compression. Put it one below middle. And that is looking gorgeous there. The old the old situation, you can see that was that wasn't a flush at all. That was a very, very poor finish. Whereas here, you can see consistently, apart from when I reduced the air compression to too low. Let's try it. this piece of the Alcatrave, the, the really skinny piece, pot. And that wasn't flush. So for those pots, probably best to just increase the depth. Let's see what that does. And that fired it flush, as you can see, like that flush finish. didn't fire it flush so it's probably I would to be safe I just put it on the maximum air compression because that's what really gets it in the woods because if you want to do different parts of the wood this is the nice thick part and this is the thin part if you just put it on maximum air pressure you're pretty much guaranteed to always break through the surface so I'm just gonna max it out on both and I think that's gonna be the best yeah that's That's, that's gorgeous there, that's a nice finish. Let's try it on a thicker piece of trim. Yay, that is. I'm gonna make it all out like that, let's see what that does. And it still shot through, but if you do very, very angled strikes, it does leave a little bit of a bump, so you'll have to tamper that at the end just to finish it up. All right, so it looks like I'm just gonna go for maximum air pressure and maximum depth because I don't want any issues when it comes to shooting in nails on any beveling or anything like that. I always want it to penetrate the surface and then my strategy is just to go put a bit of filler on top and then paint over it. So that's my strategy here because I really don't want any nails sticking out. I just always want it to pump through and that's probably the safest bet to go and if you look at here the nails are all popping through the other side it's a very very strong strong gun actually pops through to the table underneath there is one more mode i want to try out and that's the bump fire mode and the way that one works is as soon as it detects that there's a surface it will automatically fire so for example you hold down the trigger you just keep the trigger held up you can just have your fun it seems and we're out of bullets already yeah that was a quick test drive of this nail gun maximum setting seems to work well i'm going to take it in size i'll put up our alcatraz one side is in oh Okay. The nails just went through to the empty area, empty cavity. That's not good. So let me just do it again properly. Okay, that was more solid. Maybe I'll shave off a millimeter of this one. That is the mark there, slightly below the mark, slightly below the mark. And this will probably be too long, let's see. That looks good there. Oh, that's perfect. Alright guys, I got over excited with the holes, but as you can see, it looks like I'm going to have to do a lot of filling, or well, she's going to have to do a lot of filling. Good luck. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks, you're welcome. But I don't mind because I want to make sure this is nice and solid. I feel like I can hang on this. But we're up close. This is what it looks like over the edges. I even put a nail between these guys just to make sure it doesn't shift as well in the future. Just a nail between these guys and the top guys. And I did some last minute alterations. This is, this is what it looks like from a distance. 
you know I can't even see the holes it might be because I, I broke my glasses but uh yeah I can't see any holes but we'll still fill it up patch it and paint it and it won't be there and that's the new trim so for the filler I'm using wood filler non-shrinking this one's interior grade only not exterior thing I like about this one it says that it is it doesn't crack and it's non-toxic mmm I could yeah interior it should be good enough and to fill it's just pretty easy actually I already filled one there just get a scraper scrape it straight and that looks gorgeous put a splodge in scrape it splodge in scrape it splodge in make sure it's fully in and then scrape it and then just fill in all the holes really all right are you ready i am born ready we're going to be putting the trims the longest trim in history for this window so i have to hand to you the mantelpiece <laughs> we're going to be using the ag 16 gauge nailer for this one well i'm up for the challenge Let's and what go. could possibly go wrong Just finished all the trim, bought it up, got it up there, and I even filled it up with wood filler, so the holes are almost gone. Just gonna paint over it, it's gonna be gorgeous. This gun, very easy to use, gotta say, it's very heavy though. Getting the angles, you do get used to it though, however, and maybe this nib can be annoying when it's slightly go away. So when I was trying to do in the corner bits, it was a bit tricky. Maybe I should have used Sims or whatever, but for my first time, I got the job done. And it did fire perfectly. I'm not doing my hands, but it did fire perfectly, and it did go through perfectly. And I managed to fill up and look good. The only one thing I did do adjustment-wise is I did lower the depth a bit more, decreased it because it was hitting really hard through the pine. So I just lowered it slightly and got a good depth, and I thoroughly enjoyed using it. However, there is one person who also used it, and I want to know what she thinks. Well, actually, you know what? I think this was actually an awesome find because it has given you the power to change all of the skirting. And what was it like that? you shooting it? Well, it's very heavy. <laughs> it's fun, but it's very heavy. I am like super anxious. I might do something by mistake, so I'm pointing it this way. But look, I gotta say, the end result is remarkable. Um, it looks so much fresher. It's awesome. And you've done such a sterling job, professional level, at DIY standards. All right, guys, let us know what gauge gun you're using because that's the biggest debate online I've seen. Everyone's always saying, use 8 gauge. But for thicker pieces, use a 16 gauge. But they don't specify the thickness. The anyway, so I use 16 gauge, worked really well. Gun's been reliable. 50 millimeter shots, had some fun. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show.